Coming up on today's edition of Locked On Eagles, it is the eve of the 2022 NFL Draft. We're finishing up our rankings in the secondary, which the Eagles could use a lot of help at the cornerback and safety position. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Today's edition of Locked On Eagles is brought to you by Blue Nile. This Mother's Day, give mom something she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On listeners get $50 off $500. Use the promo code Locked On at checkout. I'm Louis DiBiase. He's Gino Camilleri. It's Wednesday, April 27th, which means at this time tomorrow, we're recording at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. The NFL draft will be officially underway. The Eagles on the clock at 15 and 18 as of right now a lot of insiders though saying no shock at all it'd be more news if it wasn't happening Howie Roseman's working the phones maybe trying to move up maybe trying to move down is it for a pass rusher or receiver uh, is he trying to move down and maybe think about taking a linebacker is he gunning for somebody in the secondary We'll find out tomorrow. Gino, today, though, we're going to wrap up our series ranking these 2022 prospects, starting, or I should say finishing off, with the secondary. At the cornerback position, we'll give our top 10 prospects our top five safeties as well. And we have talked a lot about these positions this offseason for the Eagles because cornerback more so, it's a long-term need with Darius Slay and Avante Maddox in-house but you need to address this position in the first round or second round for only the first or second time in a decade plus. And at the same time, safety is a very immediate need and a long-term need. So I'm not sure when these positions are going to go off the board for this football team, but there better be at least one pick addressed in the secondary with those first three picks in the first two rounds. Will it happen? I, I want to bet. I want to believe that it will. And uh, we'll rank the prospects today. Please, man. Please, please, yeah. please, please, please. I think it's Give probably a better chance me. of it being corner, Gino, than a safety. But I think you're going to get a safety, I, I hope, in the I first hope, two dude. rounds. I it's really got to be at least so. the top three rounds. There's, They can't not take one. I just want one as bad as I've ever wanted any Christmas gift, thinking the night before on Christmas Eve. It's draft Eve. I want a safety, man. Like, I've wanted one all off season, And now going into this group, we only did our top five. It was tough for me to fit five in there, Lou. Like, there's a bunch of guys right outside my top five. Like, you got a guy like Tyson Anderson out of Toledo who could come in and be a fantastic, fantastic strong safety for you. Kirby Joseph out of Illinois, man. Like really another like guy yeah. who could play free safety. Didn't get him into my top five. JT Woods from Baylor, I couldn't fit yeah. in there. That's a th fast, this play, reminds, ball skill safety. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of the Kavan draft, right? Because you had the top guys up top. You had... Darnell Savage is Sierra Adderley, but then we're like, okay, we didn't get any of those guys, but you got Kevon Wallace, who at the time was a pretty solid pick and still to be seen what he can do, but having a versatile player like that from a versatile defense to come into your defense with that versatility is exactly what you want. It's a lot easier to have a player at the back end that already knows how to play multiple positions than it is to train a guy to play multiple positions, in my opinion. And, and Gino, this is a position that, you know, maybe Kyle Hamilton does fall enough to maybe trade up. Maybe he does fall to the 15th overall pick. We were talking before the show and, you know, maybe some people right now like Lewis seen better than Hamilton. Maybe some people prefer to wait and teams could wait on, you know, Daxton Hill or, or Jaquan Brisker. Um, Maybe Hamilton could be an idea in round one, but I, I do think as much as I want a safety with one of those first three picks, especially considering the Eagles missed out on Marcus Williams' this offseason and they really didn't add anybody outside of a one-year Band-Aid again with Anthony Harris, I do think it's there's probably a better chance the safety comes from either moving down from that 18th pick, maybe moving up from the 51st pick in the second round, or maybe, I don't know, man, I mean, right now there's so much talk about the defensive line with this team and receiver and corner that maybe it is more of a Kirby Joseph, a JT Woods in the third round. But they've got to get somebody, and a look at your top five, I think there are options with that range I just laid out. Kyle Hamilton's your number one safety, Lewis Seen at number two from Georgia, and then 
in the range that the Eagles could strike. Michigan's Daxton Hill, Penn State's Jaquan Brisker, and then rounding out your top five is Baylor's uh, Jalen Petrie. Talk to me about this list. You know, again, you were really into this position. What made you come up with this top five? I would say that the top four are all worthy of first round selections. Now, where in the first round is exactly the question that you have to ask about this group. Kyle Hamilton, to me, blue chip prospect all day long. I take him in the top 10. If he's there, I trade up for him. But Lewis Seen, Dex, and Hill, Jaquan Brisker, I don't know, especially in this class when it's reported that most rooms have between 15 to 19 first round prospects. Do the Eagles drop back out of 18 or do they grab that guy? Because currently, I don't know if I'm taking Lewis Seen at 18. I definitely wouldn't take Daxton Hill or Jaquan Brisker at 18. But if we move back, let's say with a team like Green Bay in the mid-20s, right. let's say Tampa Bay, compile more picks, you miss out on your guy that you wanted with that 18th selection, safety is the move. Safety is the, the exact move that you should make in that area. Because if you look at those teams in that range – a lot of them are going to probably be striking on a wide receiver. We hear the news out of Dallas that they want a wide receiver. It seems like that mid-20s area is exactly where you want to go because teams around you are leaning more defense. They're leaning away from this position. But Lewis Seen, Daxton Hill, Jaquan Briscoe are day one starters for me in Philadelphia. I agree. I take yeah. a day one starter in the mid-20s all day long. I, then Jaylen, like the let me, I'll finish with okay, Go ahead. Sorry, with Petrie. Yeah, with Petrie, it's more of – does he do anything great or does he do a lot of things good? Which to me is he does a lot of things good. I would take that in the second round. He doesn't really explode off the tape with, with his play speed or anything outside of how good he can tackle. But as a safety, he could do a lot of everything, which to me, if you're looking at second day safeties that have been taken, mm -hmm. that's your guy right there. And I know there's a better chance that they're going to go receiver. Like if I had to put my money on two positions that I feel confident are going in those first three picks, it's likely to be defensive line, whether it's a tackle or edge and wide receiver. But, you know, I look at safety and I look at receiver and safety would make more sense if you move down. But I want to get at least one of these top five players like, sure, I like JT Woods a lot. I like Kirby Joseph, too. But um, I, I just think edge is deep. I think wide receiver is deep. I don't think they're as immediate needs. And these are important positions. Like to me, you've just been skimping and trying to get by at this position and cornerback too at, at times through the draft. Again, the whole point that we've talked about this offseason is every single draft, you don't have to take linebackers high and safeties and even corners. Like you're going to most of the time commit to the trenches. And if you need a quarterback, that's going to dictate a lot of what you do and receiver as well. Things that have to do with the passing game. Um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean you always neglect these spots. And safety really is the perfect reflection of that. This team has not taken one in the first two rounds since 2011 with Jaquan Jarrett. And I think these guys, you know, you don't see them a lot of mock drafts, but We've, we've done it a few times where we moved down or even took one at 18 because I think, you know, Seen, Hill, Brisker, and Petrie all do fit that mold. Maybe not at 15, but um, here is – that's my corner list. Here is my top five safeties. Uh, a little bit of a difference here. We both have Kyle T Hamilton at one. I really like Jaquan Brisker from Penn State as my number two. So the only thing we really differ here is I have Brisker at two and I have Lewis Seen at four, whereas you have Seen at two and Brisker at four with Daxon Hill at three and then Jalen Petrie at five. But I think those guys all have really good coverage ability. I think Brisker and Scene's physical upside is really enticing. And then if you want more of like the deep, you know, Marcus Williams type, the, the guy that can just fly around and cover a lot and, and be more of like a, a corner, I think Daxon Hill is someone this Eagles team might really like, Gino. I think what you said about like the priorita prioritization of the passing game, right? Well, on offense, you prioritize wide receivers and pass-catching tight ends and running backs. Yeah. What position can take that away if you have a guy that right, can really Right, yeah, we shouldn't even negate safeties if that doesn't have a huge impact on the passing game. Look at the teams that have really succeeded in, in the last couple of years. I mean, Buffalo, man, like you look at that safety tandem that they have with Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer and the versatility that they're able to bring by maneuvering either of them out of single high in the middle. They can run two safeties on the backside. They could also bring those two guys down and defend against the run. But more than anything, what Buffalo does and what a lot of those teams does 
do that have succeeded with these top safeties is that their top safeties take away those top passing targets that come from areas outside of the wide receiver. You want to shut down Travis Kelsey and George Kittle? Go get yourself a top safety. Go get yourself a hundred. That's why I like go. Briskridge, you know, because yeah. like he's a former corner, but he's got the size, somebody that can play in the box, powerful tackler. And, and like he can man, he can go man to man with a Kittle or a Kelsey. And I think seen kind of that way too. So that, that's why, I, yeah, you're right. I mean, these guys are matchup proof and, you know, that's the thing is like, I think it was Shell Capadia of The Athletic said this, like when you're talking about what you, what you consider a first round player, like you should be asking a question, a couple questions. And one that he brought up that I really liked was when there's two minutes to go, it's a one possession game. Is that player going to be someone that's on the field for you? Or is he somebody mm -hmm. you have to take off? So a lot of that had to do with like, you know, running back, maybe nose tackle, uh, limited, you know, linebackers. And these kind of players at safety, you're especially in those situations. We saw it with Malcolm Jenkins. You mentioned it with the Bills too, like getting into a, a match like they had with the Chiefs. You need these kind of players. I look at why the Eagles made the playoffs last year, Lou. It came at the hands of their, at the time, oldest secondary player in Rodney McLeod picking off Washington to send this team to the playoffs. And when Rodney McLeod was his best, when Malcolm Jenkins was his best, where did this team end up, Lou? And what was that thing that they won at the end of the year? Was that the Lombardi yep. Trophy? When you they, had, they had bad corners, man. Like, yes, yeah. you, corner to me is more important, but like safeties, like the Bills, for instance, uh -huh. I just was thinking about them again. When they lose Tredavious White, how do they overcome that? They have Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. Yep. So I don't even like when people lump in safety with linebacker, like you shouldn't take them early, like they're a replaceable position. I don't know. I mean, yeah, in certain schemes, but you don't always want to be a team that has two safeties 800 yards off the ball. And you want to be multiple and have these guys be versatile. Yeah, you don't just want a one-dimensional piece back there, too. It's almost like with linebacker. Like, if a guy's just a, a run-stopping linebacker, he's going to be taken off the field on third down more than likely. If this is just a safety that could come down and tackle in the box, I don't know how reliable it's going to be on the back end. And same thing, if they can't come down and tackle, I mean, and they can only play on the back end, you're really limited. You need versatility, especially at this position, especially in today's NFL. And for a fan base, Lou, and a franchise – that now has gone through two different periods, first with Brian Dawkins, where they really couldn't replace that element on their defense. And now with Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod, we should be one of the teams that is pounding through the roof for a safety, man. Like, that's the position that I always think, What, like you said, what is the instant impact? Like, what is the game-changing impact? Safety, to me, is a position that you can – there's no middle ground. Like, you either win – because of said safety, or you lose because of that safety, because they're going to be put in big time matchups. You can't just have Marcus Epps in single coverage on DK Metcalf with the playoffs on the line. Yeah, yeah. he's improved, but we see what it can do when you have one dimensional pieces at that position. Yeah. And that's the thing is like corner, you could talk about justifying, maybe waiting a little later. You could mm -hmm. say the same thing about linebacker because of Davy and Taylor and Kazir White. We had that conversation before, but I know you don't force need, but safety, you got to come away with something here early in the draft this weekend. We'll continue to get into the secondary because the Eagles also have to invest in a cornerback early in the draft for the first time in a long time this weekend. So we'll go through our top 10 corners coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles. And guys, today's show is sponsored by Blue Nile. At BlueNile.com, you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. From diamond jewelry, cocktail rings, tennis bracelets, they have it all for this Mother's Day. Get your mom, your wife, your girlfriend, the in-laws, something special this year at Blue Nile. And whether she prefers a statement piece or everyday subtle elegance, BlueNile.com has fine jewelry options for every mom. Shop high-quality classic diamond earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, or gemstone pendant necklaces. Whether it's everyday fine jewelry or wedding rings, bands, they have you covered. And if you're looking for jewelry but are having trouble choosing, Blue Nile also has experts on hand 24-7 on the phone or with online chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. This Mother's Day, give mom something she'll treasure forever. 
with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Lockdown listeners, they get $50 off, $500. This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. Use the promo code LOCKDOWN. That's promo code LOCKDOWN. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging. And that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Visit BlueNile.com today. All right, Eagles fans, thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. It's your last listen until the 2022 NFL Draft. We're going to go live starting tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, the NFL Draft at 7.30. We have you covered all throughout the first round. The Eagles right now slated for the 15th and 18th pick. Something tells me that will probably change by the end of tomorrow. Why, though, will it change? Will they be going for a pass rusher, a receiver? You know, a lot of talk today. Jordan Davis talking about how the Eagles defensive uh, line coach recruited him to Georgia. Jamison Williams talking about how the Eagles said they want to draft him. You know, so we're looking at those two positions. But at the same time, we hear about trade-ups and we're thinking, okay, could that be about you know, Kyle Hamilton, who we talked about in segment one at safety. Could it be, Gino, about cornerback with Ahmad Gardner and Derek Stingley? That's another position. We, you know, we talked about safety, how much they need to invest in this spot for the short term and the long term, especially missing out in free agency. But cornerback, look, right now, do you desperately need it? No, you have Darius Slay and Avante Maddox. Those are two really good players of the position that aren't going away in a year or two. But Outside of Sidney Jones, Howie Roseman has never taken a corner in the first two rounds. You are going to need somebody long-term outside of Darius Slay. And in the modern-day NFL, with how good passing attacks are, you got to have two boundary corners, man, that can move and that you don't have to hide. Last year, you had to hide Steven Nelson. I don't want to have to do that anymore. Yeah, you're not going to fill every hole, but at this spot, I, I, I don't want to go cheap. I mean, do you need even three at this point with the amount of empty sets that are running yeah. this league? Especially if you're Especially not going to have the safety and linebackers. I mean, mm -hmm. Gino, you can't just take linemen, 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 linemen. Yeah, it is a great philosophy, honestly. Like, just have as many linemen as you can, right? But at the same time, yeah, it's good to get after the passer, but you also have to get after the guys that are catching the ball. You don't want to have to have your line overcompensate, Gino, all mm -hmm. the time. Like. We need to end the rush versus coverage debate and just really have them intermingle because you have good players. Yeah, how about they compliment each other? <laughs> yeah, that would be great for one time in the history of this franchise, wouldn't it? But no, this isn't the need where you're like, oh man, like if we don't walk away with one of these guys, it's going to be dire straits. No, not at all. But just like Landon Dickerson last year where you're like, okay, I, I see where they have a hole in the future. But at the same time, there is a wide open spot for him to go and take. Like, there's nobody to play cornerback right. number two right now. It's Zach McPherson is your number one at that spot, potentially signing a, a veteran after the draft is something Howie Roseman would love to do. But development at that area really is what they have to up in that department. That was the downfall of the Sidney Jones, of the Rasul Douglas draft, was wrong style system wrong coaches, and not enough development, in my yeah. opinion. They need to turn that around to the nth degree. That that's and, and I don't want to say that they're cheap at corner. I think they've sometimes been cheap at safety. Bro, you see how much money um, Darius Slay yeah, is making? They, they, they traded multiple picks for Shit. Slay. They did take uh, Sidney Jones in the second round, Razul in the third. They traded a three for Ronald Darby. Um, you know, mm -hmm. So they have really tried this position. Howie in the past in one off season brought in Namdi Asamoa and DRC. I know that was, you know, over a decade ago, but that was still Howie and what he was constructing. So, you know, it's not like he doesn't prioritize corner. It's a lot different than linebacker, even at times safety. Um, but at the same time, like last year, you missed out on Patrick Sertain, JC Horn. You didn't take Asante Samuel in the second round and you, you want young corners. Like you can talk up, you know, Tegawan and Vincent and even McPherson all you want, but those guys are not CB2s on the outside in 2022. Like, that's just, don't tell me Michael Jaquette, that level of player, like, is ready to go. I mean, that's just, I'm not saying those guys are going to be Michael Jaquette. Um, maybe they can turn into a Chandon Sullivan one day, but I don't want to bank on that this year. So I think they're, and I think they're going to take a corner. If they trade up, um, I don't know, Gar you know, Gino, you know, the tough part though with corner is, I think Ahmad Gardner and Derek Stingley are going to go pretty early in this draft. Uh, let's take a look at our rankings and talk about those players. So here's my top 10. Gardner and Stingley, I feel like, is the consensus top two. 
I feel like, you know, most people say either Andrew Booth or Trent McDuffie is your three and four. He is my three, Andrew Booth from Clemson. So I, you guys know I'm a big Tariq Woolen guy from UTSA. He's my fourth corner with Trent McDuffie rounding out my top five. And then my bottom five, Florida's Kair Elam, Auburn's Roger McCreary, Cincinnati's Kobe Bryant. And then at nine and 10, it's Alabama's Jalen Armour Davis and then Washington's Kyle Gordon. How did uh, we Jalen. have the same group three groups in a row? <laughs> we, uh, same we talked, exact we talked a lot of football, man, for a long time. <laughs> and then here's your list, uh, your top 10 corners. You've got Stingley at one, which I like, man, because I almost did that. I go back and forth, but it's just so close, and I love both players. You got Andy Great at last three. year, regardless of what people mm -hmm, say. I agree. You got Kyrie Elam at four, Trent McDuffie at five, Roger McCreary at six with Tariq Woolen at seven, and then eight, nine, and ten is Kyle Gordon, Kobe Bryant, and Jalen Armour Davis. So talk me through this because earlier in the offseason, you heard from some people that they thought Stingley was capped. I didn't really see that. The testing doesn't show that. The film at most of the time didn't show it. Why does he uh why is he your number one guy over sauce? Because personally, everybody has an opinion, right? And like yeah. I like to say what I here around right just to inform our listeners but right personally i don't look at the freshman campaign and a number one overall recruit and what he did after his injury last year and say i don't think he could play in the nfl yeah, no, it's I hard to bank on at a high level two seasons man being yeah. like if you're gonna say which one's the outlier i'd probably say the injury year yeah, compared the to middle 2019 one. like i know it's yeah. been three years since he had like perfect film but you know that's the great thing about these two corners of the top like their film for a season is almost near perfect. Like, listen to this right. stat that I saw on Twitter today from uh, Ahmad Gardner. This was from PFF. And it was that uh, quarterback's pass rating is against Gardner this year. It was, or since 2019, 31.5. Passer rating throwing the ball into the ground every play, 39.6. Like, these two are. Wow. It's different than Sertain and Horn last year. A lot of size and mismatches, whereas these two are just, like, fast athletic cover corners. Yeah, they're both guys that can man match. Um, I would say Stingley more than Gardner understands zone principles. Um, mm. but at the same time, I personally have loved Derek Stingley ever since I saw him as a freshman because to me, if you could come in as a true freshman, and this is why I keep pounding the table for Kavan Thibodeau as much as people continue to give him crap, you have an incredible ceiling. Like, I don't think Derek Stingley was ever tapped. I still don't think he's tapped. I think he has another rebound year when he comes into the NFL. And there's talk that he could go to Houston at number three. Wouldn't shock me in the absolute slightest. And to see what he ran, to see what he ran, Lou, after that injury, buddy, you could have cut off one four, of his three, legs. Seven. He runs a 4-3-7. I don't care what happens. It's going to be tough, man, when it comes to, again, I want corner early. And I think they there's a better chance they take corner than safety in the first round. But Stingley and Gardner again, man. Like these are in such a, a league where there's like three deep at, at star receivers on some of these offenses. Like there's just not enough corners. If you can get a guy like Stingley or Gardner with those kind of ball skills, the change of direction, the way they can flip their hips and just totally shadow a guy. Um, again, like Horn and Sertain last year were great. And I'm not saying Stingley and Gardner are way better than as, as prospects, but they're they're different. And I, I this is my style of corner for sure but again it's going to be tough to go get them are, are you comfortable with like when when it comes to that next tier we've mocked Andrew Booth to this team before I think once with Trent McDuffie like are, are those guys for 15 or are they more you hope they fall to 18 well in the ultimate mock draft I was okay taking Andrew Booth at 15 yeah. I think I would be I think more, more Booth than, than McDuffie that. early I uh, read a report today that Kyrie Elam more than likely would be the odds-on favorite to be the fourth cornerback taken after Andrew Booth, Derek Stingley, and Sauce Gardner. I can see it with the I, lines. I don't know personally if I'm taking him at 15. I have a hard time with Florida cornerbacks. They tend to just not be like the greatest tacklers. If you look back at C.J. Henderson, I think Kyrie has a lot of that to him. But man, his athleticism is off the charts. My tier one is obviously the top two guys. I go tier two are definitely Andrew Booth, Kyrie, Stephanie yeah. Trent McDuffie. With the tiers, though, there's almost a tier within a tier where it's like, I don't know if I would put a first round grade on that tier two player, but like mm -hmm. I'll take him at 20, which I wouldn't consider yeah. like a first round talent. But at the same time, I'm okay with saying that if the over under for cornerbacks in the first round was five and a half, I'm hammering. 
hammering the over because in today's league, especially with how bad the cornerback play is, it's almost like linemen. It's like you can't get enough of these guys because if one right. goes down, you're one away from having a guy who's a depth piece and Michael Jaquette goes out there and he, he doesn't even know how to T-step at the back of his plant and he can't get out of his stance. So right. I want guys that I know can be true athletes, which I think everybody in this top 10, like I'm shocked you put Jalen Armour Davis on there. He might be the best athlete out of any of these guys on this board outside of Tariq. That's Coleman. why, I mean, that's my kind of prospect. So if you're going to yeah. wait on corner, it, he makes you know some sense on day two. Uh, Gino, Kyer Elam, like I think he does match what the Eagles want. I think they do want a guy with length. I know everybody's really putting Trent McDuffie with this football team if they don't get that. It just you doesn't know, match top the profile. Two. I just right. don't see it. And I don't want to put him in a box because he is undersized and doesn't have the length. Like Asante Samuel last year didn't really either. But when you can shadow a guy like that and come downhill like a rocket, like McDuffie can, like he is a good tackler. Um, I don't want to say he should be off your board, but – it's really close between him, Booth, and Elam, and heck, even for me, Tariq Woolen. So, like, when it comes mm -hmm. to the tiebreaker, then you sometimes traits come into play. Like, what am I looking for specifically? So right. It's like the receiver debate with like Drake London versus other players. Like, you're not going to force a certain style of player, but it's really close with those guys. So, I, I would lean towards more, you know, even though I have McDuffie ahead of Elam, I think for the Eagles, probably more Booth, Elam, and um, Tariq Wollin, if you want to wait in the second round and maybe make a move up from 51, I, especially with having Slay and Maddox, I'm all in on that project. This episode of Lockdown Eagles is brought to you by a protein bar that tastes pretty much just like a candy bar. It's Built Bar covered in 100% chocolate. It's soft and easy to chew. It's all of the flavor and none of the guilt of your sweet tooth. Whatever that craving is, it could be a Hershey's bar, Reese's cup, you know, the cookies and cream Hershey's is my go-to with white chocolate being a favorite of mine. Replace it with Built Bar. Again, all of the flavor, none of the guilt, only 130 calories in most bars, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to one of those candy bars, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Plus the flavors. It's one for every taste bud. You've got mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, you've got white chocolate cookies and cream, which again replaces to me the Hershey's cookies and cream bar. I'm a white chocolate, orange chocolate guy. I have very specific taste, but Built Bar has me covered. Plus they have now the first ever protein infused marshmallow bars with cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, and banana cream pie flavors. Head over to Built.com today. I'll get you 15% off when you use our promo code. It's LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, to get 15% off your order. Trust me, I've never really been a protein bar guy growing up. Built Bars have changed the game for me and everybody else. Use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. I really think any of the guys in our top 10 could go in and be instant day one cornerback number twos like Kobe Bryant. That was literally his freaking job. Like Loved he was the number the two Bowl, to, yeah. to Ahmad Gardner. And and we're throwing at him a lot because of all Gardner. the time, all the time. And that's why I don't knock him for like the amount of touchdowns and receptions yeah. that came his way. Brother, if the guy on the other side is pitching a shutout, somebody's got to have the hits coming their way. And Kobe Bryant, the same way. And Jalen Armour Davis, like we talk about the prospects that have came out of Alabama the last couple of years, he's kind of just been in the wash, but he was a consistent piece for Alabama the last couple of years. And his athleticism too, he tested incredibly well. Yep. And I, I just look at this whole list, Lou, if I'm looking at outside cornerback, I would only kind of take out maybe Roger McCreary due to his, his slot prowess, Trent McDuffie due to his length a little bit. And I look at the profile of everybody else in this group. Jonathan Gannon has drafted players that are six foot, that have long arms, and that are athletes. That fits the mold for just about all of these guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, but that's why it's tough. I don't know if they'll take McDuffie or Roger McCreary. Um, you know, McCreary is a guy too that I like his man skills. And I'm not saying you have to be Tariq Wollin, six four, you know, seven five wingspan. Obviously, kidding there. But like being that kind of build to play on the outside. But yeah, I think this team would prefer that style of player. And if not, you got to be a damn good athlete that can really stick. If you get both, then that's can a they run, player. brother? Can yeah. they run? That's what so, it is. Again, though, with corner, man, I think I think you got to go early. Like, even in the second round of 51, 
I don't know if a lot of these guys are going to fall. Like the best so. case scenario, maybe at 51 is Kyle Gordon, you know, safety. You could argue, maybe you can get like even a Jalen Petrie to fall down to 51 or you make a small move up a corner. I don't know. Man. Even like, again, I get the edge rush talk in receiver, but corner to me is the position. Like you probably got a nail pretty early. I agree. And I think corner is also a position that they could double dip at in this draft. And yeah. we don't really know what the depth is on this team either. And you need that as well. That's a very important part of this whole thing. And it makes the engine run. You look back to the Saints playoff game a couple of years ago, right? And you're down to, you're like, who the hell is, is Devontae Bowsby? You're like, what? where did this guy even come from? And you don't want to be in that situation again. Like, if you're in a situation where you could say, oh, yeah, I, I mean, we sign a veteran guy late in camp and we have an Andrew Booth, one of them goes down for a week or two, yeah, we, we can make this yeah, work. Yeah, because, you know, if you if Darius Slay went down, right, like, again, you don't <laughs> don't, you don't put that in a Don't corner, put that evil into the right, world. Right, because you have Slay and Maddox. Like, you could say, well, we got two of three pieces there. We don't have to force this. But – you are one injury away from being right back into that situation where you Marcus need those a single kind of coverage against DK Metcalf. Right, and you got to start bringing safeties back again, like in 2020, where you're telling me it's a positionless group and there's guys playing corner that shouldn't be, and this and vice versa. You know, they they need depth and they need top tier talent there too. So um, again, I don't know if they have a chance at Gardner or Stingley. That is my ideal trade up. Oh, um, Roseman's the general manager, dude. They got a chance yeah. at anybody on any trip. I mean, maybe the if fat, you could hang on, work out a deal with Carolina this. at six, you got a shot. Maybe. We have to address this, that Howie Roseman picked up the phone and called the Saints. I know Mickey Loomis is a great general manager, but if you see a Philadelphia area code and Howie Roseman is trying to call and talk about draft picks, <laughs> hang yeah. up the phone, my friend. Like, who has gotten out on the better side of this? Even moving back with Dallas last year, giving up that third, we still got Devontae Smith. Like, we still got our guy. And if they have their guy and they say, Andrew Booth is our guy at 15, they'll take him. If, let's say, Ahmad Sauce Gardner's there at, at nine and they're like, okay, we're making the move now, I would put all my money behind it in the world that Howie Roseman goes and does, does that. Because now, Lou, after 2013, after the Andre Dillard class, he ain't going to let three times bite him. He's not going to allow – his guy to slip away. And when people say like, oh, are you okay with taking position X and waiting around for position Y? Well, it depends who the guy is. Because if we're going to say, yeah, let's wait on safety, but Kyle Hamilton is there for a trade-up, yeah, maybe you have to take a little step back at corner because you can go and get that guy. Whoever their guy is, Lou, I'm confident they walk away with at least one of, quote-unquote, they're my guys tomorrow. And, and I hope they're at this position. It's like I know it's probably not going to happen, and two of the three picks will probably be a lineman and a pass catcher, but – Matter you, rise up to me, man. Like you got it. You got to take a corner in safety. I just like if I was the GM, and I know you can't force things, but I got to come away with a corner in safety in these first two rounds. Like those would be to me. I would be very committed to making that work with two of my three picks, and then saying I'll take a receiver or an edge with that other pick because I think those are just deeper classes. They're not as immediate needs, and there's just got to come a time where you address these spots. And so, yeah, you don't take Kyle Gordon with the 18th pick. You don't even force it with it. You don't think Kyer Elam is worth that kind of selection, and you can't get down the board because sometimes it takes two to tangle with the trade. And if nobody wants to come up, well, then, again, you you have to pick with the selection you have. But it's just – it's time, and I'm just trying to hope that they get at least one prospect these positions, but it's time to go heavy there through the draft. I, I'm not saying they've neglected these spots, but they haven't addressed it really through the draft, you know, and – um, it's time to do that because you're not, you haven't hit on free agency. And so it's time. It is. And there, there's not much more to say. Like when I send my guys out, when I coach lacrosse, I'm like, guys, I told you all I can tell you folks locked on Eagles listeners. We've told you all we can tell you at this point, Howie Roseman is going to do what he wants to do, but just know, and I'm going to leave you with this, whoever they pick, they spent countless hours investing their time researching this guy that individual has spent their whole life getting to this point 
let's just be respectful through the whole draft process and not kill these guys when they're taken. Don't, don't criticize know what, the player, but you are more than welcome to criticize the pick. You can you can criticize the pick. If they take Devontae the Wyatt and then they take like um, Zion Johnson, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm 100% going to lose my mind. <laughs> go after the mailman, not the mail, right? Like, right. go after how he Well, that's what I always even said about the back. Jalen Hurts pick, man. It's like, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I was yeah. going after the parents, not the kid. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? You, you, you never personally went after Jalen Hurts until after the fact, and we saw him Don't tell that field. to our, our haters, though, because they, <laughs> uh, they won't agree. But uh, I just want to right? say that, too. Yeah, yeah just no, be 100%. respectful about it. And the, these guys are professional athletes, and they're getting – a huge paycheck that we're not going to get and let them celebrate because if I was in that position, didn't matter what anybody says to me because I'm going to go out there and live up my draft hype. And that's what we come here for, Lou. This is our Super Bowl. This is our Christmas Eve. Everything that we work Can't for wait, at man. Locked on Eagles. So unpredictable tomorrow, tomorrow, right? I have no idea what's going to happen, but we have done all the speculating we could. It We're on E when it comes to that. Like we need results. I'm under E. <laughs> We got our rankings all done, though, today with corner and safety. Everybody, thanks so much for, you know, joining us all throughout the offseason with mock draft Mondays and rankings and all these scenarios and the free agent period. It has all come to this tomorrow night at 730 Eastern time. The NFL draft officially kicks off with the first round in Las Vegas. The Eagles at pick 15 and 18 will be live all throughout the draft. So please subscribe to the show on any podcast platform for reactions after the draft but also, again, live all throughout in video on our YouTube channel and as well on our Twitter accounts. It's at LockdownBirds, at DiBiase, L-O-E, and at GC24 underscore football. That'll do it. We'll see you at the draft tomorrow. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Make sure your second listen, the Lockdown NFL Draft Podcast with Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker as they also get you ready for the draft tomorrow night. As always, thank you for downloading, thank you for watching and listening, and let's go Birds! Fly, Eagles, fly.